and just see if uh, that helps helps at all since yeah lots of lots of energies and things and feelings it's all good so this deck uh, I'll show it to you is called spirit allies it's pretty simple I actually don't know it very well I had bought it for my daughter and she apparently didn't want it so I took it in like a like a homeless dog and the deck is now mine so I'm getting to know it but it's just simple And then first, uh, just taking a minute to like center into your own self. And I know that sometimes it's the first time all day we've done that. It's early here in the morning, but I know it's not everywhere. So just take a moment and turn, you know, look away from the screen. Uh, you can look at all the beautiful faces again in a moment, but just for a few seconds, closing your eyes, if that feels good but just tuning into your own self. Like, are you breathing? You probably are, but where are you feeling that? Uh, do you need a drink? Do you have to go to the bathroom? Are you tired? Like, what is your body up to right now? Just doing a really simple check-in so that you can arrive in your body no matter what's going on. And just witness whatever it is. You don't have to change it unless it's easy to change, like getting a drink of water. And just notice any emotions bubbling up, any feelings of tension in your physical body. Uh, that might be something you want to check back in with when the call is over and you have a little bit more time, or maybe tonight with the full moon. So feeling where you're at in your body and then kind of coming back to this very large group here uh, where it can be harder than to tune in. So that's why I like to do that first. And then you can look around and maybe feel more connected. We can feel like we're actually in a circle somewhere. I don't know where it would be. Someone can pick a place. Maybe we have a yurt somewhere out on a big, beautiful piece of land. I don't know. And on that note, let's see, one more card to shuffle here and then we'll see what we get. Okay, asking for whatever is in alignment for the greater good here today. And of course you can take it or leave it. Uh, it's 53, which is the Leo card. Uh, we're not in Leo season anymore, but... Um, you know, it might apply to someone in some way, depending on your own astrological placements. Uh, but Leo is also fire and power, right? And infinity um, and the number 53 there. Sometimes numerology makes more sense. So if you add it up, it's eight and eight is Leo anyways. So I don't think the book will have too much. This is a very simple book, but I'll look it up anyway. Okay, so uh, I create the life I want to live. And that is exactly what I think Margot and I will be eventually honing in on today, um, creating the midwife lives that we want to live. But for a general message, it's about your ideal life and what that might look like. So remember that Leo is bold, vibrant, and fearless. Uh, Leo stand tall and proud in their light. And Leo is the daring reminder that you can create your own experience in this lifetime. So holding that frequency, imagining yourself in your best life. How does it smell? How does it taste? How does it feel? What are the details? And leading your own way because Leo really is the leader. So there you have it. A message from whatever you want to say yourself, the spirit realm. And yeah, gratitude for this deck, spirit allies. So yeah, creating your own best life. What a great way to start this call. Yeah, and that word leader, I feel like has come up, you know, with you and me in conversation this week and um, in something I had made, oh my gosh, sorry, I'm gonna have to turn that off. Um, in something that I had made for 
something else, some piece of content this week too, talking about like village leadership and circle leadership. And I feel like that's so much of what we focus on, you know, with our doula Academy and also with our Indie Birth Midwifery School and all the things that we've made and are currently making. And um, that leadership piece feels really important, that Leo energy. Sure. I mean, what is midwifery, if not leadership, right? In a lot of ways, uh, leading your community, leading women in general, often is how it turns out, at least in older times. I'm sure that's even more true. Or it wasn't just pregnant women, but the midwife held the circle for the community uh, to hold space for the girls, right? That were, were bleeding and learning about that and uh, moving into the elder role as she would age. So always a leader to be in that role. Definitely. Yeah. And definitely this piece of crafting your own life, creating your own life. I think that's definitely what we're going to talk about today. Where should we start? I can hear some weed wackage, but I think it's okay. Yeah, I'm going to, let me just shut the windows. That would probably be helpful. The people in Hawaii love their weed whackers and leaf blowers. Oh my gosh. It's like comedy. Like there's no grass to really mow. So people are really into blowing things around. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, it's comedy. But I think that helps, at least for the moment. That did help. So yes, where would we like to start? Hmm. Well, we are calling this, uh, you know, Midwives in Recovery. And I'm sure most of you read the email, but it had kind of started um, almost as a joke. You know, Margot and I text and talk a lot and it came up in whatever way that we were labeling ourselves at the moment, right? Um And I said, I think I said, uh, I just feel like I'm in recovery. I feel like the break is so nice and there's a lot of healing to do, frankly, from, uh, specifically a last birth I attended. And I think that's part of, you know, recovering from whatever it is you're talking about, not to mention like the literal, um, you know, maybe it's uncovering to recover is to like reclaim. And I think there are parts of this role that I'm feeling into reclaiming at a deeper level. And then to be honest, there are just total shifts and changes that need to be made uh, before I would want to redream it and, you know, officially recover it for myself. So there's a lot there. I don't know if any of that sparks your interest, Margo. Yeah. I mean, right. Most people have probably read your email about the break. I don't know if people have read my email about the break I'm now taking as of like two days ago. Um, I'm moving in two weeks to a new city here in Minnesota still. Um, but in the process of, of that, had to kind of like release, (laughs) I think six clients that I had lined up, um, before, before doing that, before being able to make this move. And so, um, my last client just had her baby on Monday and maybe if she agrees to let me share some of her story someday, I'll say more about it, but it was definitely a, you know, peculiar, unique situation. And, um, now I'm on the other side of that and, have a bunch of other big stuff going on in my personal life in terms of getting divorced this year and, you know, having sole custody of my two kids. And, um, you know, so there's been a lot on my mind for a while around how does this look doing this work as a single mom? And right now the answer is I don't, I don't do this as a single mom. It's not going to be possible. Um, and so I've been really grateful for the births that I have done in this way, showing me that really clearly. So Um, I can say more about that, but that's not quite what the topic is today. Um, I also took most of of last year off of actually attending births as well, thinking it was to like build up into this new version I wanted to do it in. So it's sort of funny how the universe is 
laying it out for me. Um, I did build like a whole new version and it was really cool to try it with a few people. And now it's like, I'm actually ready for another new version already. So, <laughs> so yeah, recovering, um, recalibrating and just like, uh, recouping. And I think, you know, not to go back to the leadership thing too soon here, but it keeps coming up as you were saying, Marin, like the different aspects of the role that you're looking at, you know, keeping or shedding, um, that still stands out to me as something that is important for me going forward in whatever way, whether it's in attending births or not. Um, and if I go back to attending births, I feel like wanting to do this in an even more explicit way, um, taking on this leadership role, a wider role, you know, amongst women. Um, and that's, what's really missing from mainstream midwifery. I think there's, there's a lot of ways of saying this, but wives are bosses. They're not leaders. They're, they're women who are telling other women what to do and how to do it. And they're following the rules of the government or their training that they were taught. They're not leaders. They're just like bossy. Um, and so really finding a way, another way, a more complete and deeper way of being in that leadership role while maintaining everyone's autonomy and not allowing people to step out of self-responsibility basically um, is sort of how I'm imagining it right now. And I'm in sort of like this dreaming space and phase with Marin and creating some new things um, soon here at Indie Birth, I think along all of these lines. So that was a, that was a ramble. I also have a migraine, I guess I'll give myself a little iota of grace for my brain being not quite in top form at the moment. It was a great ramble and Rumi was screaming. So it was a perfectly timed ramble. Perfect. Yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, recover can mean to find something. So I think there's some relevance there. Uh, you know, not to get totally esoteric, but internally, there's always a lot to be found. And no matter how long we're on this planet, no matter how long we're in this role of whatever it is, midwife being one, uh, there are always new things to find out, you know, about yourself and, and how you want to feel and be in the world. Um, so just in case, you know, anybody thought that <laughs> once you're a midwife for a while, and I know there are some, you know, elder midwives here, um, who I'm sure could attest to the same thing. Uh, it's like, that doesn't really stop like the inner, the inner journey. And I think that keeps it fresh. And that's also something I'm seeking, you know, um, I haven't been a midwife, you know, for decades and decades, but 15 years is a good amount of time to want to seek some freshness about it all and to not just find something within myself, but also to remember. And I feel like remembering is often the theme, especially when we work with pregnant women. That's at least how I approach it, that I think as women, we all hold the wisdom. We all hold the knowledge to create, to birth, to mother, but that we need to remember. And sometimes it's helpful for other people to show us that, you know, to guide. And I think that's where midwives are particularly helpful. Um, but yeah, remembering in myself what I came here to do and how I came here to do that. And that's a question for all of us, really. So no matter where you are in your journey, on your journey, what did you come here to do? And I think going forward with that helps me recover from, um, you know, what can feel like bad experiences or even, you know, mistakes. And I, and I don't really believe in that. Um, you know, I think it all happens for a reason and I think there is wisdom and to be grateful for that wisdom brings the change we want to see. So to continue the ramble, uh, I was thinking about remembering like in my bones, like in my cells, how this work 
should feel to do and should being like, not an obligation, but just like in my deepest memory. And I think there's a simplicity and an ease and like a, a vibrancy and a supported, a supportedness around the kind of midwifery I want to create. And I found myself getting away from that for whatever reason, it's no one's fault is nothing to do with the people I was working with at all. Right. It just can kind of slowly happen over time. So taking this break and taking this time, like physically in a different space uh, has allowed me to be more clear on, okay, if I want it to feel simpler, if I want this to feel easier, like what would that look like? Um, and Margot and I have talked, you know, at length about this, our indie birth sanctuary, for example, like that's still a project I care deeply about. And that's something that for me would sort of like take care of a lot of the issues that I currently have with myself in midwifery. Um, I don't want to be on call 24 seven. I am over it. And I'm just going to say it. I'm over it. I can't do that anymore alone. So it's got to be in some other configuration. So to recover in that way feels really good because it's an honesty And maybe that makes everybody feel a little better in some ways. Like if you're a student and you're like, oh God, how was I going to do that? It's like, you don't have to, we need to figure this out. (laughs) We all need to figure this out because honestly, um, you know, unless you're a very, very special human in a certain way, uh, it is so draining and my body is recovering from that. And, you know, I don't think there are too many women here that don't understand the demands of constantly caring for other people in one way or another, but it is um, something about midwifery that I think needs to be majorly remembered and recovered. Yeah, we've got a great message over here. I hope it's okay that I read this, even though it was a direct message to me. Um, I won't say who it was from in case you didn't want that, but just says, just listening to y'all and feeling like practicing midwifery as it is in this modern world is not healthy And it takes a long time to even recalibrate to a place where you can even begin to recover. Um, Okay, cool. I can share that it's you. It's Madeline from Believe in Midwifery. Um, And then, yeah, just, you know, reflecting again, that this, the sense of responsibility that does not belong to us um, and how to, you know, kind of dismantle that. I think we should talk more about that. I want to stick a pin in it for a second. Um, and just say, I think I had texted you this, Marin. Just I was thinking about it as I went to bed last night. And it was the first night really in, you know, many weeks where I didn't do the thing where I checked that my ringer was on and went through the like, okay, if I get called, here's the plan. Um, and just did like the mental work and emotional work load of that. Um, with a kid that still sleeps with me and would be pretty upset if I wasn't in the bed, if he woke up in the middle of the night, like all of that. It's like just a lot. So anyways, I was going to bed and like the phrase that kept coming to me was like, the novelty of this has worn off. And I started going to birth when I was 21. Is that right? Oh my God. That's crazy. Yeah. I guess I was tech. I was about to turn 22. Um, didn't have kids. It was exciting. I had energy. I slept as much as I wanted. Like life was pretty simple. I just didn't know if there was anything in it. Okay. Don't unmute yourselves, people, unless you're going to say something. Uh, Be careful. Um, So yeah, that was my experience coming in. And it was kind of like, I could do this every day was the feeling. And it was so exciting and new um, and still really like romantic. Right. And so now with the novelty having worn off and seeing the amount of energy that it takes, not just being on call, like you said, Uh, Madeline like this other part where you're literally and and this is where I think the conversation will get really interesting because it's like I don't believe that that responsibility is mine but somehow like just existing in the soup that is our culture it like creeps on to you if you're using this word midwife um and and that feels really uncomfortable so that's my ramble about that just like the novelty part and I think people not getting it always when they start this work and I feel like this is also a really vulnerable conversation to be having as people who are midwifery educators who run a midwifery school like you know I don't ever want to make it sound like it's going to be easier than it 
is. Um, I don't want to scare people away either, but you know, I think a lot of midwifery educators aren't really talking about this um, or are talking about it in this like really, really superficial way where it's like, well, yeah, then just have a team of midwives be on call. You know, like there's these sort of superficial solutions that we know also aren't working out in the world either. Like women don't typically like that approach um, and midwives still get burnt out that way and they still... um come up against some of these same issues or they're not making enough money or like, you know, there's, there's the model isn't really working um, as it exists anywhere. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's not working. And I don't think that's a reason to not pursue this path because I know many of you are just amazing creatrix manifestors like we can make this whatever we want Mm -hmm. so it's not a matter of like oh don't be a midwife although you know I've certainly had days where I'm like why on earth would anyone do this but you know we all have days I think generally speaking this is information that we are entitled to as women that we need to hold that we need to pass down Um, even if you did a whole midwifery program and never became a midwife It would still be super valuable, in my opinion, to have that information. Uh, But yeah, having this little bit of time off even, and it's only been four months. um, It's been four months off call. And actually, uh, yesterday marks the first day that I met someone that asked me to be their midwife already. And I was like, I was honest. I said, I'm not, I am not being anyone's midwife. And I mean that sincerely. Um, There is another word I probably will come to at some point. Uh, That word isn't really working for me. And I think it conveys some of the things I have a problem with, even though it's a beautiful word, too bad. But anyway, uh, four months off only has like given me this different view in so many ways. Um, And one of them is around money and the way we are compensated. And honestly, like, the slavery that is midwifery currently, Um, the amount that most midwives work for is severely low and out of touch with reality. And, you know, I think there's so much layered in there, but you factor in the exhaustion and being on call. um, And there is like a major recovery we need to do a, a major claiming we need to take um, back of whatever, whatever service, whatever gift we are giving to our communities here, um, that make it sustainable for us to do that. So yeah, in the four months I look back and I'm like, how, how did I, how did I do that for that much money to be frank? Like, that's just honest. It's like, it's not that those things, those things do not match up when you're not in it all the time, when you're in it all the time, it like makes sense because other midwives are charging this or that. But once you step out of it, even for a little bit, wow, my mind has been blown over and over. Like, that's insane. That's kind of slavery. Um, I mentioned that I'm in the process of moving and I'm buying a house and I'm selling, I actually sold this house today, two hours ago. Um, And that has been really interesting. And I'm also a money coach. If people don't know that, uh, I'm going to be releasing a new money course very soon. God willing, God is willing. Um, But so this is a topic I love talking about. And uh, it's just been eye opening would be a word I would use as well. You know, like we need a new septic system here at my house and it's $29,000. Or uh, mold is getting remediated in the house that I'm buying. It's a three-day job, and that's $7,000. You know what I mean? Like, these men out in the world doing these traditional male jobs have zero problem charging an amount that gives them a comfortable life, where they're able to retire, where they're able to save money, where they're able to send their kids to summer camp. Like the midwives that I, because a lot of the money coaching that I do is with midwives um, and doulas and birth workers and and female entrepreneurs. um, And like the way that women devalue their own work and are willing to live in a way that feels um, more stressful because they don't have access to the same amount of money when they don't charge the correct amount of money to live 
a comfortable life. It's just like totally fascinating. Um, so there's so much to say and learn and, and think about in, in all of those places. And that's where, you know, I think Marin and I are at the moment taking it down to the studs, as they say, in remodeling world, like cleaning it all out and being like, if we could rebuild this, how does it look? And, you know, we both might come up with slightly different ways, but um, yeah, being sort of, I don't know, it's hard. It's like when you're trying to, I think remodeling actually is a great metaphor. I'm going to keep going with it. Like when the house is already there and you take everything out and you go to rebuild it, like that's one thing, right? But like getting a new piece of land and like building something from scratch, like you come up with something very different than you would if you were just kind of trying to remodel, right? Like there's still a box that you're in. And some days I feel like a lot of what I've done with my clients is sort of like trying to restructure this box instead of being like, no, 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 like this is toxic and unhealthy. Um, because the house, the midwifery is kind of like built as or on or whatever we want to say in this metaphor that's getting away from me here, um, you know, is not built on self-responsibility. It's built on hierarchy. It's built on the idea that a midwife is the boss and that they answer to the government and the government is in charge of them and they are in charge of their clients, not what we're talking about, which is totally, completely 100% different. And so it's like anywhere that those little tendrils kind of come in, even if it's the like, I see clients every four weeks ish. I see clients every two weeks. You know, I get out my like my because I even up till recently have been using still like the cascade prenatal form to like fill in. Um, even though like my most recent client, I don't think I didn't take her blood pressure a single time during her pregnancy. So like I was doing it in this out of the box way, but I still had the paper. So I don't know that I'm getting anywhere, but I'm just sort of trying to paint you a picture of where we're at and all the things that we're questioning and, you know, the places I think it's really important to do some inquiry and questioning even more, which feels crazy because we're already thought of as like the really radical weirdos in the birth world. And it's like, no, no, wait, wait a minute. We have more, more to say, more we'd like to burn down. So Hmm. there's always more to burn down. I think there's a good question over here. Did you see it, Maren? Um, maybe we could talk about when we think it changed. Like, has midwifery ever been what we are thinking about for the future? And that's a very cool question. I would like us all to think about that for a moment. I personally would say we are building something entirely new that has threads to the past and honors where we came from and our ancestors and the fact that, you know, birth itself has not changed. So we're not reinventing that. It's the same. But I do think there needs to be a shift. Um, And, you know, we can all kind of like speculate, I guess, about older older times in history, uh, days gone by. But I read a book recently, and I can't remember the name of it, and I left it in Kentucky. But it was a, like a midwife story um, in biblical times. And at first, in reading the book, it sounded really dreamy. You know, she's the village midwife, and they come and fetch her when they need her and all of the things that we know. But even in this book, there was mention of also another like obvious thing that we forget, which was uh, the midwives were also, you know, executed basically that they were responsible even then for a baby coming out healthy and alive. And I know that's like, we're just kind of used to that, but like, it really hit me when I was reading it. Cause it was like, Oh, I guess in my mind, I had this idea that in older times, maybe it wasn't that way. Um, but maybe it's safe to say that midwives have always like maybe assumed or stepped into this role where people think 
you have more power than you do. Like, yes, is it a God-given role? Is this a spiritual path for many of us? Absolutely. That does not mean you're God. That does not mean you decide things. So that's like the piece that gets me a lot. And I think that actually links up quite nicely with licensing and regulation, because at the end of the day, the midwife must make sure that everybody is well. And that is beyond our capacity as humans. That is beyond our skill set, right? Beyond what we would do in an emergency. We don't have that um, authority over another soul. So, you know, has that always been there, I guess, is where I'm going with it. And where does that shift need to happen where the parents take the responsibility for the baby they are bringing in, no matter where, no matter who, no matter what, they are the ones who are responsible for the soul coming in from a conscious conception, whatever, all the way through a pregnancy, that this is a product of these two people. And the midwife is not part of that equation. Like, where did it ever happen that she became part of it is where my curiosity is. Yeah, lots of good questions over in the chat. Jasmine said, how will women take responsibility if we continuously step in? I think that's like a really rich place for discussion too. Um, And, you know, my, no one has to agree with me, but my current belief is that when we're in community with each other, we can both be in community and also be responsible for ourselves. And that that's, sort of like my ultimate goal like even in my little ecosystem here at my house my parents have stayed with me this summer um you know my parent and so I've got my mom and dad and me three adults in one house with my two kids and it's been really cool to see like a more healthy way of like co-parenting not with their dad but with my parents um and also then where weird things pop up and anyways you know, one of my very favorite resources ever to recommend to people is nonviolent communication, because I think it gets to the root of this where like, yes, we are responsible for our feelings and our needs and communicating them. And we're responsible for ourselves. And, and also we are social creatures and we're in connection with each other. And how do we do that dance then without like, where's the line where it tips from like, Hey, these are my feelings. These are my needs to like trying to tell the other person they're responsible for them. Does that make sense? So to me, I think that it's similar in the birth space. Like I had Marin at both of my births and there was no part of me that thought that she was God and would make sure that both my babies came out alive. And yet there were things that I communicated both times where I'm like, I feel this way and I have this thing I need. And then it was up to her to say whether or not that was something she was comfortable doing. Right. So it didn't mean that I didn't have self-responsibility because I needed something. Does that make sense? And that's where I think the free birth thing is like a really easy out and not that people shouldn't choose that if that's what they really truly want. But if they're trying to escape this like complexity of how do we be self-responsible, but also in community with each other and also social creatures who rely on each other, um, you know, that's, it seems like it's an easy way to solve that problem, but it's actually just like running from it, in my opinion. So I don't know. I don't have the answer. I think it's really complicated. And that's partially why I feel like I need, I need, mama needs a break. (laughs) Yeah. It's very complicated to talk about how, like how, the question has been posed. How will women take responsibility if we continuously step in? And the question that comes up for me in response to that is how are we stepping in, you know, and can we be more clear about what, what that is? It gets very messy, you know, because if you are a midwife and you have, you know, skills Um, It's common for people to say things like, 
oh, I, you know, I understand, I understand this is my birth and like, I want to be completely autonomous. And, you know, that's why I want to hire a midwife like you. Um, but I also want someone there like in case, and that's like a curious place to be as the midwife, uh, because yes, in theory, I could be helpful, but I feel our role is also so much more rich than that. You know, I've never liked to be the just in case person. And typically when people have said that, it's like, well, you know, I don't know if I'm the person for you. I enjoy being in relationship with my, uh, with the women I'm working with and getting to know them and not just being like a nine one one in the other room. That's also an odd Mm. for me that doesn't work I don't I don't really enjoy that but yet it's like a difficult thing because sometimes those are the women that are like well I am accepting full responsibility like whatever happens happens but you know to have you there would make me feel better and it's like okay I also understand that because women are with women when we're giving birth and you know so like how are we stepping in what is being asked of us like are we agreeing to it are we in alignment with where that woman is. And those can all be really difficult things to assess, obviously, because everybody's different. Like I'm hearing you say that, um, that when someone says, I want to take full responsibility and basically want to do it on my own, but maybe have you in the other room that that feels like, well, yeah, but like you're missing this other part of the role that you're actually excited about bringing to them. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, I find that the hardest to communicate. Like even recently, you yeah. know, the person that was like, oh, like, will you attend my birth? Like, I don't, you know, I don't need a lot of prenatal care. Like kind of like, I don't want to, I won't bother you with that. And it's like, but that's actually midwifery. Like that's actually what I bring to the table. Like God willing, you don't need anything at your birth, you know? So it's like women have it backwards. They think they want, they think they want someone at the birth because we're taught birth is scary and blah, blah, blah. But the most supportive way I found to be a midwife, and that's the most fulfilling to me is to connect and do that work with someone in their pregnancy and support them after a baby. Um, I was half joking the other day, but not really like, maybe I'll just do postpartum care. Like, I don't care if I'm at the birth, like call me when the baby's out, I will come and I will take care of you. And that feels really good to me, actually. Like, maybe I'll do that because something needs to shift. And maybe that's where it happens, right? Where women, where we say to women, like, I'm in this role walking with you. Um, I don't know if I'll attend your birth. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how your pregnancy goes. And maybe you won't even want that when the time comes. And seeing rather than like, I need a midwife at my birth. I need a midwife because what if, if something goes wrong, I have someone there. And I don't know, that's what I'm recovering from. I don't want to be that person anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, what I'm really hearing you say, and maybe it's just because it's like, oh yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to say is like that that's missing the point of what I think you're really skilled at. And something that I feel like I'm pretty skilled at as well. It's like, um, I'm trying to think of the example that came to mind, but like I've had clients who have had me for multiple pregnancies and births. And so like, I walk with them through that whole thing, the postpartum, we kind of wrap it up. And I always say like, don't be a stranger just because we're like done with what you paid me for. Like, I really want to still be part of your life. Like definitely reach out if you need anything. Um, and then I'll hear from them two years later when they're pregnant again. And they'll be like, Oh yeah, all this crazy shit happened in the last two years. And I'm like, I was here. I'm available. Or like, you know, I've had people be like, yeah, I had a couple miscarriages between. And I'm like, you didn't think to reach out to your midwife about loss about, like ceremony around that or like honoring you through that like even though it's something I talk about all the time like they know so there's something even with like these really cool clients who where they just it's like once you've been put the midwife hat on they don't understand that there's this other whole role um that I'm really excited to to fill which I'm doing a lot with like my money coaching um which like really is more like life coaching but with a money focus right um, and looking at women and their relationship to their own power. And so that's what I get really excited about. And birth is just one part of that. So I don't know if that's at all what you're getting at too, Marin, but, um, I feel similarly in that, like, yeah, the prenatal time 
feels really exciting to me because we can have those conversations and that those, those conversations and discoveries and everything that happens there influences the birth. It's not that I'm excited about the birth moment specifically. It's just sort of like the cherry on top. There was this interesting, like maybe it's when epidurals came around comment that there's so many I've like lost track of it maybe that's when things changed when people stopped accepting birth for what it is oh I know what I was gonna say too I think yeah I think the epidural thing is true I think all of it's true though like whether it's tools or concepts like Baron, you were saying, oh, if something happens, right? And we were talking about this in terms of like the new thing that we're maybe making. I keep hinting at it, um, which there's not much more to say. So that's about as much of a hint as you're getting, but because I don't even know. But um, whether it's like a tool, like let's say Pitocin for postpartum hemorrhage or the concept of postpartum hemorrhage and how it all works, you know, like once these things have become canonized and it's like this is the thing you do or this tool exists then now everybody who attends births has to grapple with their relationship to that tool whereas when there were less tools and there was maybe a different cultural understanding of you know i mean like there was maybe a completely different way that our brains even thought about birth that we can't even name or understand from this modern place right um getting like really philosophical here but it's like we're trapped within the confines of our cultural context which is that these tools exist so you know at a recent birth you know like cesarean is a tool that's available and so now we have to like we can't unknow that we can't (laughs) decide that it's not a tool when it is and so it just makes it all so much more complicated um in terms of you know how we go about counseling women through the process if we are there in the moments at birth and something does come up. I feel like there could be a Black Mirror episode about this. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like what if a mid like wouldn't that be a great that'd be a great show if anybody here is in the film business. Like a modern day midwife being time traveled to an era where like these tools were not on the table. Like it would look so different. Like just their mere existence has changed. I think what midwifery is not to mention then all the other stuff layered on top of it. So it's a lot to unpack. Sure. I did a podcast, I don't even know when, in the last couple of months about like Dopplers and fetal heart tones. So you can go find that if you're interested, but uh, similar, just pondering, you know, at home births specifically, since that's what we all care about, like why and when did some of these tools come in that maybe really aren't even that helpful. And, you know, as a midwife in her own autonomy, uh, perhaps choosing to not use some of them, like w- will sound crazy to probably people not on this call, or maybe some people on this call. Um, but you know, what if we didn't incorporate some of these medicalized model handovers, that's all that they are. And midwives have taken them up so gratefully, I'm sure in some innocence, in a sense, right? Like, um, you know, Dopplers maybe would improve outcomes for the births that I attended home. But it's like, what if none of that is true? And we've just sold out. And now we're stuck in the middle. We've forgotten where we came from. We've forgotten that, you know, women know if how the baby inside of them is doing. Hence, kind of like stepping up our own authority over her with this tool And it's very confusing because it's hard to backtrack from that. But that is seriously, you know, one of the things I would like to recover um, and ponder, you know, uh, very intentionally 
if and when I go back to attending births, just what I, what I do bring, what capabilities I do have and not, and not making those out to sound like anything at all, because the truth is, uh, you know, we don't, we don't always have what we need at home. That's just part of having a home birth. They don't always have what they need in the hospital, right? Sometimes there's like nothing that kind of can be done or, or will be done. Um, but anyway, all to say that I think there's also this like false sense of security nowadays with midwives and with home birth. It's not that it's not safe. Of course, I think it's safe, um, but it's safe like internally. It's safe in our physiology. It's not safe because someone brings a Doppler to a birth. And it's just kind of royally fucked up the whole thing because it takes women away from themselves and puts this, again, this responsibility on the midwife, who's the one holding the tool. So it's hard to get away from being responsible, you know, in that, in that case, in that sense. Yeah. Someone brought up the the term coach. That's definitely something we've been playing around with. I was said yesterday, I feel like coach makes me think of like a man with a whistle though. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, some, that's, that's been something we're definitely in conversation about. And lots of people are experimenting with what they call themselves and we don't have to get into the weeds with that whole conversation, but because that's part of it though, it's definitely part of it. And you know, over the years I've felt really stubborn. Like I don't want to give up the word midwife because it feels like that is what I do. And it's like everyone else who's calling themselves, not everyone else, but you know what I mean? Like the mainstream midwifery world, like they're the ones who shouldn't be using the word. Like, why should we give it up? We're the ones that are doing it. I think, um, in the way that like really honors the origins of the tradition. So yeah. I've been maybe the stubborn, more stubborn one of the two of us over the years being like, no, I want to keep it. I've been stubborn. And I think you bring up an interesting point. Like at one point in time, maybe it did feel like it was about other midwives, right? Like we've had this conversation. How can you call yourself a midwife when X, Y, Z, right? When you do this or when you even work in a hospital. And I don't mean that to be even judgmental. It's just simply um, like a woman coming in, how could that make sense to her brain, right? That these people are both midwives, but they're completely different in all ways. Uh, But nowadays I feel like it's, it's more about just the intention behind it. So choosing a different word would have a different intention, would it, it would have different energy. And as we're speaking to maybe just maybe in addition to making other changes, women would take that change to heart, right? Uh, Because midwife does mean what it means. I don't know how to shift that culturally. And like someone said, I think in the chat, um, it does kind of convey this idea of like medical provider. So it's simple in a lot of ways. If we're not that then I guess we're not that, Uh, but you know, people will still choose to use it and that's up to them, but it might provide more clarity to drop it. Yeah. And I think that, you know, what I had sort of been banking on was that, you know, through tons of conversations and really clear paperwork um, where I, you know, have written out exactly what I think my responsibilities are and their responsibilities are blah, blah, blah. You're right. Like there's no, dearth of information about what I think is going on in a client relationship (laughs) maybe not even calling them clients but like I think I falsely assumed that that would then translate to them getting it and I just don't think even my very favorite clients really got it um some of them or maybe they partly did but like I said like in conversations over years with them and then being in other contexts and becoming, you know, sort of, and this is a, would be an interesting call for another time, but sort of morphing into more like friendships with them. um, It's become clear that like, Oh, even these people that I thought were the ones who got it, didn't get it. So never assume anything, never assume people understand anything or are on the same page. 
candle. And, and that ma- and that makes sense. You know, I don't know that we're we're all like we're not going to be perhaps a hundred percent understood because right. we're all creating our own different realities. Um, so like you're saying, I hear you, like there's no amount of paperwork and signing waivers and all the things to like really have someone um, feel whatever sensation that is around owning their experience. I mean, people can say all they want. And, you know, that was kind of this last birth experience I've been hinting at, which I will tell the story one day, but you know, these people just said what I wanted to hear. And I ignored some very, um, you know, I ignored, I ignored what I felt and I ignored things that I should have paid more attention to because they just said what I wanted to hear. And when it came down to it, they didn't really believe that their birth was theirs. Um, so, you know, don't think you don't always live and learn. That's the humble truth that you will be tested on all of these things, but the testing definitely brings brings me brings you brings all of us to like the next level so I'm grateful for it in that way because god willing like I will not find myself in another situation like that thankfully to these people I will not it 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 will not manifest that way again Um, but good changes you know have obviously come out of it so it's a clarity it's all the inner inner workings we're all doing to just hear ourselves right to feel what we need in this world um and then putting it out there in a way that it resonates with the right people and not doubting ourselves when it doesn't feel right maybe this one last question and then we can kind of wrap up and maybe while you're looking at it i'll just say before the last question we are running a really crazy sale on our midwifery school if after all of this you, you still want to learn about how to be a midwife um it is a back to school sale and we've never offered one like this we're doing half off and you just need to i'll find the link for you um and pop the code in the chat as well we have a good number of people who have hopped aboard and are starting in the next few weeks. We're asking that people start by October 1st. So if you're ready to start anytime in the next month, you can take advantage of that deal. Um, We're giving people longer than that if they're active doula students of ours. Um, We've had that question a couple of times. So people have wanted to finish the doula training with us and then go on to do the midwifery training. So if that's you, uh, we can do that for you. But everyone else, uh, you'd need to be ready to go in the next month or so. And I will, <laughs> Mabel says, I almost want to do it again. It is really great. And let's answer that last question. Cause I think that we'll probably say something about the school <laughs> because that's what the school is about. Yeah. I mean, I'll look at the question in a sec, but I wanted to add. Yeah. Cause it's kind of funny. I mean, it's like a joke, right? midwife needs to midwifery needs to be recovered we need to reinvent it but here enroll in midwifery school and what comes up for me around that is you know whatever we want to call it let's just still call it midwife for right now that is a calling for many of you here like I see many of our students I see many about to be students um so I think acknowledging that there is still of course, something beautiful and sacred and special about that role, no matter what you call it. And just to be really clear, it's not a doula. It's not a birth keeper. A midwife is someone that to me embodies all of those roles and more actually, which is why it's hard to only use one term. But one thing that comes to mind that I love about being in this role, and I think many of our students do, um, is that you also get to problem solve. And I know that sounds odd, but I just wanted to put that in there because, you know, not every birth, not every woman you work with is easy and simple. And occasionally things do come up and, you know, we're not doctors, so not going that route, but just saying someone needs assistance with uh, their blood pressure comes to mind. Something's going on with their blood pressure, right? As a midwife, I think we have so many tools to address something like that, not just medications, but emotional work, spiritual work, but we know about lab work. We could order some tests. Let's see what's going on with this woman. 
And I just think like, to me, that's what keeps me at this day in and day out for all of these years is that it's like interesting. And there's always like a new puzzle to kind of work with and not that anything's wrong, but you know, as a midwife, you kind of pull in all of these pieces. So that's what I think a midwife is to me. That's what makes our school unique because we're doing all of that. We're not just telling you, oh, babies always fall out, just sit there. Uh, we're also not telling you that every baby uh, or, you know, what came up this week, um, you know, midwives that do like mandatory glucose testing, like just to do it, like, no, think for yourself. That's the fun of being a midwife is creating how you see this going and offering it to the world. So that's what our school is about. And that probably sort of answered the question. Yeah, I think so. And the question had been, what is the ultimate role and what are the responsibilities of a radical midwife, especially surrounding birth? And yeah, I think the very long answer is our 20 month program, which helps you explore all of those many, many, many pieces and come to your own conclusion. And, you know, as Marin and I shift and change and have these conversations and think about how it's going to look for us, like we're going to share that with our students. So um, I think, you know, I don't know that anyone's directly asked me about that piece or how that's going to look, but like we do weekly student calls that are Zoom calls like this. Um, Usually uh, it's not just us talking, right? Like students talk and share and ask questions and chime in, share stories. Um, And so, you know, as we evolve, the school evolves as well. Um, So it's not like you're going to get a midwifery school and then we're going to be like, we're not midwives anymore. Bye. Um, We're going to for sure be bringing all of this richness to you um, in real time. And so uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really excited that we have so many people starting at once, because I think that that energy and that momentum really is helpful for, you know, all the active students, but especially for those students who start at the same time as each other, it can be really, really beautiful to see. So. Mm -hmm. That's the short answer. I put the link over in the chat. Um, if you don't see it for some reason or you're watching the recording or whatever, it's indiebirthmidwifreeschool.org slash application dash and dash tuition. So just go to the Midwifery School website, in indiebirthmidwifreeschool.org, and then click on the application and tuition link, and you'll see everything you need there. Does anybody have any questions about that? People that are considering enrolling, you're welcome to either pop it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask if you've got questions. We've got, a, I've got a few minutes. What about you, Marin? Yeah. The link isn't appearing. Okay. Uh, that's weird. Try this one. Oops. Also, just, just as a, as a wrap up while Margo posts the link, um, you know, it was very nice seeing you all. This was a really fun topic. If you have other ideas for topics, you can let us know. We do these every full moon. And if you want to pop in the chat, just like kind of as a wrap up, um, anything you feel like you gleaned from this, any inner wisdom that was reflected back to you that you want to share, just take a minute. And it's always nice to just kind of see how Uh, this hit you all. And that helps us know what kind of topics to do in the future. So no pressure, but if something feels like it needs to be shared, please do. While you're doing that, if there are people doing that, I can answer this question real quick. Um, There definitely is overlap between the doula program and the intro to midwifery program. It's a long story, but uh, I'd say there's about 80% overlap. So if people have taken the doula academy, um, what we usually do is we just give them a couple weeks instead of the full 10 weeks, uh, you know, or they're allowed to take however much time they want within that 10 week range, but most people after a few weeks say, Hey, I've checked out everything that wasn't in the doula Academy. Um, can you send me the trigger to start the next part, which is the 40 week foundations. And that special goes through tomorrow till probably September 1st, if we're honest, by the time we get around to taking down the page. So Uh, You have another 48 hours or something like that. 
And if you have any questions about the program or this offer, support at indiebirth.org is the best way to get a hold of us quickly and get a response quickly. And otherwise, I hope you all have a beautiful full moon uh, in whatever way, any kind of rituals or intentions you have. And we'll see you back here in about a month with the uh, topic to be announced. Not quite sure what that is. So have a beautiful day, everybody. See you soon.